One jarring collision can change everything in an athlete's life, especially when it strikes the brain. But now a team of Florida researchers says they're finding our last line of protection isn't doing enough. Two neurologists say that for the first time, there's evidence that helmets don't protect well against traumatic brain injuries, and they have the results to prove it. The moments can be game changing. In some cases, life altering. And the only thing between the player's head and every impact is some thick padding and hard plastic. There's no way to completely prevent a concussion, but we can reduce the risk. And reduction. Uh, the head is a crash test dummy head. Could come from a simple drop. These helmets do go a long way, but we believe that there's tremendous opportunity for improvement. Inside a Florida garage, Dr. John Lloyd and Dr. Frank Kennedy are working on what they call the most in-depth study of its kind. Kennedy is a sports concussion specialist and expert who is the team neurologist for the NHL's Florida Panthers and consults for the NFL and Major League Baseball. Lloyd is a published researcher with two decades of experience in brain injuries. And right now, the two are teaming up to discover how well football helmets protect against traumatic brain injury. They say the test itself mirrors the industry standard, but with one major modification. This is the first time that uh, rotational forces have been taken into consideration in testing uh, football helmets and helmets for other sports. That's because the dummy head has a neck, and the head has nine sensors inside measuring the force of impact. So here we go. It's raised several feet in the air, then falls nearly 14 miles per hour into a steel plate. <laughs> Researchers say every drop sends data showing how well a helmet protects against not only a skull fracture, but traumatic brain injury as well. A person can, can survive a head injury such as a skull fracture. The skull will heal, but we're learning that the brain may not always perfectly heal. And after dozens of helmets from all different eras are dropped, all score well when it comes to protecting the skull. But when it comes to the brain, the researchers say the preliminary data is showing a much different story. Now we're seeing some bench evidence here that helmets actually do do little to protect against concussion. Researchers say wearing helmets only reduces concussion risk by about 20 percent. But the National Operating Committee on Standards for Athletic Equipment, or NOCSE, says not so fast. I think it's wrong to say that helmets don't provide protection against rotational acceleration. They do. NOCSE tests and certifies football helmets for safety. Executive Director Mike Oliver spoke with our sister station, WSYX, and says the committee is looking into adding rotational forces as a testing criteria in the near future. Oliver urges caution for parents when drawing conclusions based on this or other studies. Still, researchers stand behind their methods and say the study brought out some surprises. This 1930s leather helmet protected the brain better than several modern helmets. Lloyd thinks it's because it's smaller and lighter, so there's less weight added to rotation of the head during an impact. It's eye-opening. Oliver says he offers this to parents looking to get the best helmet for their kids. The helmet is the one that's either new or been recently reconditioned and recertified, but more importantly, the one that fits the best. Because fit, we think, is as important, if not more so important, than design. Concussions may never completely disappear from it, Researchers believe we are moving toward reducing them. Very interesting study there. It was. It mm -hmm. makes me think of my youth and my yes. children's youth. and It's worrisome, isn't it? It is.